for my winter project, I decided to fulfill a bit of a childhood ambition to build my own computer uh, using a microprocessor and simple parts. So I decided to follow uh, a couple of tutorials on the internet, mainly the Benita videos about building your own 6502 breadboard computer. Uh, so I'm duplicating mainly, mainly what he did, but I've made some changes and also I've come across uh, some little things that, um, some little pitfalls along the way, which uh, I thought might be interesting. So I've, I'll write all those up and I'll, I'll put them on the blog. But before I tear this down and go to the next step, Stage. I just thought I'd show you very quickly uh, where I got to. The first thing uh, I did was to build uh, a clock using two 555 timers. So this is based on some of Benita's videos about making clocks with 555 timers. His is really complicated, so I've simplified his a bit really. So I've got the first 555 timer here. Uh, is producing a regular clock pulse that you can uh, change uh, using this potentiometer. So you can make it go fairly fast. You can see it's blinking quickly there. Or you can slow it down uh, like that or alternatively uh, you can just single pulse by pushing this and you can switch between them uh, using this switch and that switches the output here which goes into the uh, breadboard computer such as it is I do also have a one megahertz crystal oscillator, which I'll eventually use as the clock. But when you're building this kind of project, it's nice to see things running and to be able to step through a program instruction by instruction for sort of debugging purposes. The 16 LEDs here are connected across the address bus and you can see the processor scanning each address. Uh, in effect, it's just counting in binary, which is quite nice and relaxing to watch. Uh, the, to get it to do that, uh, you have to give it an instruction though and what we've got here we've got some um, resistors here that are wired across the data bus and basically what that does is hard wires and no operation instructions so these are all um, wired uh, alternately to uh, to ground or to plus five volts to make a pattern of zeros and ones that make the binary code uh, for the no operation instruction which is EA uh, in hexadecimal in effect, that means that wherever the uh, processor looks for an instruction, it's always going to get a no operation instruction. And no operation instruction on a 6502 takes two clock cycles, which is why for every two blinks of the LEDs on my clock, you see it count up in binary and uh, scan another address. But every address it goes to is going to get the same instruction. It's always going to get a no operation instruction, which just does nothing. So it will just carry on uh, doing that uh, forever. But it's quite therapeutic. I quite like watching that scan. And if I speed the clock up, you should be able to see the lights blinking a bit faster. If I had the one megahertz clock um, crystal oscillator on there, uh, you would only see like a blur of light. So you see the sort of final two flickering very slightly. But uh, basically at one megahertz, it's going so quickly you can't actually see what's going on. I was uh, uh, attracted to doing this project because it uses a 6502 processor. Uh, the first computer I ever used, the Kim One single board computer, uh, was kind of a development kit based around the 6502. Uh, the next computer I spent a lot of time using was the Commodore PET. Uh, the 6502 went on to become hugely successful. It was in the Apple II. Uh, it was in the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, it was used in lots of other computers as well as obviously the Commodore 64 as well. Um, it was also the processor at the heart of the Acorn System 1 and I always wanted an Acorn System 1 as a child um, and I really wished I badgered my parents a bit more now to uh, buy one because they that would have been a good investment they uh, sell for absolutely silly amounts of money now because Acorn uh, went on to be the company behind the BBC Micro, uh, the Acorn Archimedes and then of course that became ARM and ARM even if you haven't heard of them uh, you've almost certainly got an ARM design processor uh, inside your phone uh, so ARM is a hugely important company in the world of uh, computing and microprocessors today and the Acorn System 1 was their very first product and I always wanted one and uh, so I'm going to build my own that's where I think I'm going to go with this uh, the next steps that Benita takes are obviously to add some uh, a ROM or an EEPROM to it so we can actually put some instructions in it and a program uh, first of all to make some LEDs blink in a particular pattern that we're going to choose rather than just counting in binary um, adding an lcd display uh, after that i'd like to see if it's possible to add a hexadecimal keypad and some sort of monitor program um, this is probably way beyond my abilities but it's where i'd like to go with this so that i could build my own kind of single board computer based around the 6502 so end up i aim to end up with something a little bit like a kim one 
or an Acon System 1 or an AIM-65, one of those really early uh, sort of 6502 development board type computers. So anyway, I thought I'd film this just before I strip all this out because these LEDs are probably all going to come out. Although I think and in a finished thing, if I built something that had a case, it would be really nice to have LEDs across the address bus and maybe even the data bus as well. So you can see what's going on. It's quite nice. And maybe a nice switch like this. So you've got the clock. So you could have the clock running at one megahertz. Uh, you could have it running at an adjustable speed uh, with a control on it, with a potentiometer on it, uh, and also a single step mode as well. So if I throw this switch here, so you can see now the processor has stopped. And if I now press the step button, we should see it go on to the next step. There we go and it carries on counting. So there we go. That's where I got with my 6502 breadboard computer. Um, had a lot of trouble at first getting anything to come out of it at all. It turned out I was so scared of damaging the processor that I hadn't pushed it in hard enough to the breadboard. That's why I wasn't getting anything out of it. As soon as I uh, gave it a good firm uh, squish into the breadboard, made all the connections and it started working. <laughs>